Shakespeare in London today, we turn immediately to one place, the Globe Theatre on the south bank of the River Thames. It's not the original theatre, of course, that burned down in 1613, but this seems to be part of its appeal, as though by combining novelty and history, it's attained timelessness. But the Globe only represents about a half of Shakespeare's career. He began that career not south of the river, but northeast of it, in Shoreditch. Shoreditch then was rammed with actors, playwrights, and theatre men. In 1575, the mayor and corporation of the City of London expelled all players from within the city walls. But Shoreditch, being outside those walls, was exempt and made the most of it. So, in 1576, something remarkable happened. England got one of its first public theatres, and it got it in Shoreditch. One year later, another Shoreditch theatre emerged, the Curtain, 200 yards south of the first theatre, on Curtain Road. It was here that the Lord Chamberlain's men staged some of Shakespeare's earliest and best-known plays. If I said Romeo and Juliet to you, what would you say? I would say romance or that. Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, what do you say? It's fake. Why? Why? Because I grew up in Verona and it's very uh, fake. It's The house does not exist, uh, the tomb is there, but it's fake. It's all uh, fake. I'm just wondering why you're in a gay bar asking about a heterosexual relationship. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> We're very good on legal permission. <laughs> if I say Romeo and Juliet to you, what do you think? Love. I think love, sweet, romantic. Star-crossed lovers. Yeah, exactly. Uh, where for art, though? Where for art, though? Romeo, Romeo, what? Yeah, that. No, wait, what's the final line that she says in the, in the epilogue? Can we smoke? and quince paste. Why? Because uh, I come from Brazil, and in Brazil, Romeo and Juliet is a very well-known dessert that takes a slice of cheese and a slice of guava paste that is very similar to quince. Interesting. It seems to me, anyway, that Romeo and Juliet's a very Shoreditch play. It's one of Shakespeare's smuttiest, as though in response to the vast sex industry that had grown up in Shoreditch. Yet despite all the lurid brilliance of plays like Romeo and Juliet, Despite all the efforts of the theatre community here in Shoreditch, the theatres were gradually, gradually lost. Until now. So behind us we've got the site of the old Curtain Theatre. Well, we've actually got physical remains of the playhouse, which is really exciting. So we've got the inner yard surface, which is a gravel surface where the audience would have been standing to watch performance. And we also have the foundations for the inner and the outer walls. I imagine it was pretty exciting uh, to go in there and discover something where, you know, a place where Romeo and Juliet's performed yes, and is. so on. Yeah, of course it's exciting, <laughs> yes. You know, we only ever had a handful of these, these iconic buildings to start with and to have actually two of them here in Shoreditch and their remains to survive in pretty good condition for us to find now is, as I say, really exciting. The excavations have changed what we know about the Curtain Theatre. We assumed it was round, like the first theatre or the Globe. But it wasn't. It was rectangular. Now the developers have moved in. Atop the Curtain, we're going to have a museum and 40 storeys of luxury apartments.